I'm Samantha Chappelle, and I am teaching Art J 209, which is Chado, the way of tea. So uh, most of my, I don't know, academic and professional career has, has been always straddling this uh, one one leg in art and one leg or one leg specifically in art education and one leg in Japanese studies. So um, I've always studied art education from uh, my undergrad career. I'm in a PhD right now and always did Japanese sort of on the side, but increasingly they sort of became one <laughs> and the same. After graduating, I was a member of the JET program. So. I, I taught English in Japanese schools for five years, but I also made sure to like go visit the art classrooms and, and things like that. And I also, that's where I started getting involved in Japanese traditional arts. I came back to the US for um, grad school the first time around. <laughs> And I ended up getting involved in tea ceremony at uh, my master's institution, which is Penn State. And um, that's where I started like really getting into tea. My master's thesis ended up being about my study of tea and the group at Penn State. My master's advisor was participating in the um, ICQI, the International Caucus of Qualitative Inquiry. Um, where we were all presenting uh, research. I came to the University of Illinois to present my tea research as a part of this group. And I had looked a little bit before because I was searching like who, who has a good art education program that also has good Japanese stuff. And so I was sort of like, oh yeah, wasn't, wasn't that place also had like a Japan house or something like that? And so I looked it up and I was like, well, wow, they're holding a um, public demonstration on the same day as I'm presenting. So I presented my research as part of the group. And then I was like, okay, guys, bye. I'm going, <laughs> I'm going off to this corner of campus to, uh, you know, have a tea, you know, like join a tea ceremony. And interestingly, that is where I met Diana for the first time because she was, uh, I think she was Hanto maybe. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm here presenting my research on tea ceremony, like here's the information about my thesis and when I was looking for, when I decided I wanted to come back to academia, I was like, yeah, I should definitely apply here because when I came here the first time I was like, these facilities are amazing. Uh, I was super jealous of like all of the stuff that you have, but I'm not jealous anymore because I get access to it too now. <laughs> Chado the Way of Tea is an online asynchronous class. So um, in a way, I'm not really teaching it. I'm just sort of facilitating students to teach themselves. I, I explain it to other people as art appreciation for tea ceremony, because um, you don't necessarily learn how to perform the tea ceremony yourself, but you learn everything that you need to know um, in terms of philosophy, culture, um, aesthetics. And I think a lot of people come out of that class integrating some of these practices and aesthetic or philosophical ideas into their own like tea drinking practices and, and things like that. Um, what's really exciting about it is that we just completed the e-text for this course. So um, it's a really rich way for students to explore tea ceremony through images, through videos, and we have plans to expand it even further, doing a lot of really cool technological stuff so that it's sort of a way of being hands-on without being hands-on when you're not able to be hands-on. The e-text that we are developing is, is really like cutting edge. It looks beautiful. Um, it has a lot of different ways that students can access um, information and experience tea ceremony without necessarily having access to a tea room or, or tea, tea tools. And it's just really great that we can sort of put all of the information, this wealth of information that we have in this accessible format that, that can be 
viewed or engaged with anywhere. Like, you know, it's great when we have people come to Japan House, but this e-text makes it so that people can get a Japan House experience even when they're not in Illinois. It's, it's really been um, reframing the way that we at Japan House are thinking about the ways that we can teach. You know, we've been exploring things like um, 3D scans where like you can manipulate a table in the text. It's not in there just yet, but like there's a lot of really cool potential, um, which is really like cutting edge pedagogy and and like on for especially for online things like that. And it's it's super cool. And I was really glad to be able to be part of the process. I think for this class especially, it's a little bit difficult to say that there's one thing. Um, and I think that's a strength of the class that we sort of engage students to constantly be applying what they're studying in this class to their personal or professional goals. You know, every student's gonna come out of it with something different. And I think that's what I really love about the course. Aside from this emphasis on getting students to make this personal connection with the content is this like emphasis of like truly being with people and making that connection. And it's kind of crazy to say that that's possible through an online asynchronous course. But I do, I do believe that happens, um, you know, maybe not to the degree that it happens in an in-person class, but it still is impressive that it can happen at all in this kind of class where we might never see each other in real time, uh, but we still are able to sort of make this connection, students between students and students between instructors as well. One of my hobbies that I've been able to uh, keep up with surprisingly, despite you know being in grad school, uh, has been playing shamisen, which is a Japanese stringed instrument. It looks kind of like a banjo almost. It sounds almost kind of like a banjo too. Um, and it's played with this like enormous pick um, that a lot of people are kind of scared of when I show it to them. So I actually have two types because I change genres and I change schools. Um, so when I started, I played with this wooden pick and it's held, it's held kind of weird. It's held like this. Actually, this one's held this way. So you don't have your pinky on it. Um, and so like you're holding the instrument and it, you know, it would be much lower, but like you're kind of like, uh, when I was living in New York, there's no instructors for that genre. So I switched genres, but the bachi is much larger. <laughs> so just for comparison's sake, it's a big difference. And uh, this is much heavier. So when I go back, when I first started, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm like lifting this huge weight. Um, but now when I go back to this, I'm like, this feels like a paperclip. <laughs> um, I am still not very good at playing. <laughs> um, I've improved a lot, but I'm still not very good, <laughs> but uh, I do have a recording. Um,